Hey guys, this is Bob, and I just want to take a quick few minutes and show you how to get some free Google Web Fonts on your website. Um, there's actually over 250 of them, and a lot of them are pretty good looking. And it's really pretty easy to get them plugged into your website. Um, and uh, we've had a few people ask, and so I'm just going to do a quick little tutorial about it. So to start, go to google.com forward slash web fonts, and that will bring you to this page that you see right here. And then we're just going to go ahead and click uh, Start Choosing Fonts. And then what that's going to do is show a little example of all these different fonts that we can choose. So we're going to change this preview text to, you know, whatever we want. So if you have a title you're trying to make or if you're trying to make a logo, you know, doing this, you can put your text in and see how it's going to look. You know, so I'm going to say we like this one right here. And... How about this one? And so we'll just go ahead and add those to our collection. And um, now it says I have four because I already added two earlier. Um, but you can also search, you know, and there's different categories and filters depending on what you're looking for. Um, so anyway, so once you get all that done, just click review and it's going to show you all the different fonts you've selected. It's going to show you them in different sizes and show you, you know, all this. And you can change it from headline to paragraph. So if you want to see what it looks like in paragraph form, um, you can do all that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these and just say I only want two or something. Okay, so these are the two that I want that I'm going to plug into my website. And so once you're, you know, fine with that and you review them, just go ahead and click use. And then it's just going to show you right here. And this this thing's really nice because when you plug in these fonts, it um, it is going to make your page load a little bit slower than if you were using the the standard fonts um, but I mean if you're only doing one and it's not a too uh, intensive font I, I wouldn't worry about it it should be fine for most websites uh, but I mean this thing's kinda nice just giving you a gauge of how long this particular font may take to load so from there you can just scroll down here to the third section and this is where they give you the code um, to put on your website and this is how it's going to kind of hook into the Google API so that font can show up. So all you need to do is go here and copy this and I'm going to show you how to install it using Thesis which is a theme that we use and recommend. Um, so when you're in your WordPress dashboard all you need to do is come down to the Thesis tab and then go to Site Options and then right here just click on additional scripts and then this is just going to dump it in the head um, section which is what this says just says copy and paste code and put it in the head section of your HTML and so by putting this here it's going to show up on all the pages in the head section so um, so basically we have it right here and so that's where you would just paste it and then click save and then we're good to go and and so that's the first step is getting it hooked in, but it's not going to show up anywhere until you tie it in with your CSS and then basically specify where you want it to show up. So in our case, um, we used a specific font for our headlines right here. And so right there and then right here. And then we also have it right here, I believe. Yeah, we got it all over the place. And then these are all that font. And so we did this using CSS. And so I'm going to show you, I'm going to flip back over to our CSS. And if you're using Thesis, again, this is really, really simple to do. All you do is come over to your custom file editor. And then we're going to edit the custom uh, CSS file as soon as it loads. Okay, so now we're on the custom.css file. And as you can see up here, I have some of these different um, custom heading tags. And so all we had to enter here, and a lot of the stuff is unnecessary, but I just added it to uh, more customize or better customize what I was trying to go for. Um, but all we needed here was a custom H1, and then we need to drop this font family, and I'll, I'll have this code in the blog post. Um, and so all you really need to do is just have the font family and then whatever that font family name is. And then right here, cursive, this is just the backup font. So you can specify other things here as well. 
So to make this really easy, what I would just do is if you want to change your H1, your heading tag, I mean, you can just copy this amount of font or this amount of code and probably grab the font size just so you can specify that. Drop this in your custom CSS and then just like that, it'll change it. And if you want to change your H2, you can use the same code, but just change this H1 to H2 or H3. You know, in our case, we did the sidebar one, so we did it like this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste some of this code in the blog post so that you can change it. Um, now, if you're not using Thesis, um, which I haven't really done in a long time because I'm not the most uh, I'm not the most efficient with doing a lot of stuff, um, but you'll have to edit some kind of CSS file um, somewhere, probably in your theme files. Um, so probably in the theme editor under appearance, I'm guessing. Um, and then as far as getting that first code we showed you, you'll have to get that up in your header somehow, which uh, possibly might be in the same thing. You can edit some file in there and get in your header. But I'm not real familiar with that, so that's why I just like to use Thesis because it's easy and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so with that, um, once you do that, you can get things up and running. Um, if you have any questions, uh, fire away in the comments and um, we'll go from there. All right, take care.